Peace, peace, peace. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. Um, good morning. Um, please, if uh, if you can hear the sound now, just let me know in the chat so we can proceed. Appreciate everybody from stepping through. I appreciate that. Brother D. Santapo, peace. TK, peace. Kimbo, peace. Brother Vayas, peace. BC Brown, Anthony Smith. Um, I appreciate, again, I appreciate uh, everyone. Dave B, what's going on? I uh, appreciate everyone for coming through this morning, and we continue, uh, and we really appreciate the continued support um, that you all show the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, also, please uh, join the uh, social media apparatuses that we have, whether it be Facebook or um, the uh, Duo app. Not Duo app, I forgot what the app was. But I'll be sure to put it in the chat. Also, the books I present or any sources I provide will be also in the description page. I mean, description part. So um, today is a, a special day. Um, I want to uh, highlight an event that happened in history. Um, one of the kind of, you can see the, I hope everybody can, everybody can see the screen. I'm going to make sure that as well before I get started. So today uh, marks the beginning, uh, well, not the beginning, but the what's considered a time in this country history in 1811. That was the, or called the German Coast Uprising. And it was a revolt of um, enslaved Africans in the territory of Orleans. And again, this is 1811. Um, it was around the Mississippi River, and it was um, a collection of uh, African escaping a plantation. And even though it wasn't seen as a, a blood fest, um, I believe it was only two um, white planters killed, but I believe it was upwards to five plantations were burnt, uh, three burnt to the ground. And, you know, multiple fields of different varieties were also destroyed. So even though they may not have, you know, got the bodies that, you know, they may have wanted, they certainly. Uh, destroy uh, a few families economically or a few several families economically so we'll take that as a win in itself so I want to continue on highlight two uh, events in history one is uh, a brother by the name of James Hamlet and then we're going to discuss the Christiana rise of 1851 um, I've tried and continue to make sure we all understood these this thing of called the fugitive slave act and what it allowed um, white planters in the South to do because it allowed them to, not only it, <clears throat> did the federal government identify that you were a slave or where your ancestors were enslaved, it allowed um, their so-called enslavers to pursue them for service or labor. And I'm not gonna go over those acts again because we reviewed them quite enough, but just a backdrop for those who haven't um, heard this information before. So let's, we're gonna kind of go into uh, James Hamlin. September 20th, 1850, he was kidnapped while at his place of employment in New York City. Officials suggested that he was a runaway slave from Baltimore. Because he was a Negro, he was unable to testify to proclaim his freedom. The Committee of 13 organized the free Hamlet led by Charles B. Ray, Samuel Cornish, and Philip Bell. These are some names that should be familiar to all those who've been around him for a while. Um, the committee's goal was to protect blacks from slave catchers and assist in those who were fleeing the north and providing safe passage to Canada. The committee the organized over 1,500 members in Zion Church to include George T. Downing and James McCune Smith. They discussed their resentment for the Fugitive Slave Act and details plans to have James Hamlet freed. So this is again the same black leaders we see. We see these black organizations. We see their attempts to and ultimately success to um, ameliorate their brothers and sisters in the South from the uh, peculiar institution of enslavement. Uh, the committee and its members were able to raise $800 to purchase James Hamlet's freedom. He was the first black person arrested in the city of New York following the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act. This atrocity showed how far the federal government would go to appease Southern slave owners. He was returned to New York and met with a celebration by the community. The North Star reported October 24, 1850, the reception meeting given to Hamlet, who had been purchased by contributions made through the Journal of Commerce office, and he was brought back on Saturday, was the first public meeting ever held by colored people at the park. 
it numbered several thousands. Let's see, who got Afro-Asiatic Peace, Brother Chauncey Moore, Jerome Moss. Please, family, I think we got 17. Please uh, like and share the show, hit the bell so you'll be notified when we go live. Um, so now let's kind of go into the Christiana riots. Um, in September 1851, several men escaped from Everett Gorch's plantation and made their way to Pennsylvania. During the journey, they saw asylum at William Parker's farm. William Parker was a founding member of the Lancaster Black Self-Protection Society. This society was already well known for several armed engagements with local militias supporting slave catchers. So this kind of goes into the same um, idea of us protecting ourselves. Um, I named the show I Freed Myself. Uh, I posted a book on the NBK community page called I Freed Myself by David Williams. And it really attacks this idea that we just kind of sat on our hands and waited for any deities or gods or whatever to come save us. We were certainly a part of that process. Uh, again, I quote the boards. He was saying that the United States government followed the, foot of the black, followed the footsteps of the black slave. We led this charge and forced the emancipation. So we just made sure we let the babies know that that's, we did that. Um, and these, whether it's James Hamlin and the Committee of 13's ability to ameliorate him, or what we're about to see here with uh, William Parker and his protection society, we're going to see how these men, um, similar to what we see William Steele did uh, in Philadelphia, what David Ruggles did in New York with these vigilance committees, and we'll go into those um, soon and get kind of a better definition of those, but this same idea of local communities black folks forming societies or mutual aid and benefit organizations and protecting themselves and freeing themselves. Um, where we at? After securing the support of local militiamen led by Federal Deputy Marshal, the party arrived at Parker's farm. Members of the Lancaster Protection Society were ready to protect and defend the farm. Uh, this is a, I hope everybody can see it. This is a photo of two men who returned to the scene um, after a warning to leave by one of the committee members, Gorge fired a shot. After a shootout, Gorge lay dead and others in his party severely wounded. After the altercation, William Parker and his family were aided by members of the committee and crossed over to Canada to avoid arrest. Local officials arrested over to two dozen members of the community, but because of their solidarity, were unsuccessful in securing convictions from a jury. Surprisingly, some of the jurors were white members of the community, angered that the law was not only unjust, but was turning their community into a war zone. So this photo here is actually from a, um, a text by William Parker. Let me see. Let me share my screen for a second so I can pull it up for you. Let me see. Let me do some, do William still some, some do here. I'm sure everybody may have seen the Harriet Tubman movie. He is uh he is also featured in it. So this um is a collection of uh, narrative uh, enslavement narratives, and also um how the these vigilance committees and mutual aid and benefit associations assisted those who were escaping enslavement to get to places like Canada or wherever else or Mexico things of that nature. So this is the Underground Railroad record. Facts, authentic narratives and letters, narrating the hardships, hair breathed escapes and death struggles of the slaves and their efforts for freedom, related by themselves and others or witnessed by the author. So I wanna say, it's on 534, ah, here we go. So one of the places that, um, even when you search it online, it's sourced from is William Steele's Underground Railroad uh, record work. So let's see, I think it actually gives the account. Please, family, if you're joining us, please like and share the show. Let's see, Let me blow this up a little bit. Hope everybody can see. All right. It says one year from the passage of the law and a time alarm and excitement were running high. The most dedicated stand was taken at Christiana in the state of Pennsylvania. 
to defeat the law and to defend freedom. Fortunately, the fugitives' plans and the, of the slave hunters and officials leaked out while arrangements were making in Philadelphia for capture and information being sent to anti-slavery offers. A messenger was at once dispatched to Christiana to put all persons supposed to be in danger on their guard. Among those notified were brave hearts who did not believe running away from slave catchers. They resolved to stand up for right of self-defense. They loved liberty and hated slavery, and when the slave catchers arrived, they were prepared for them. Of the contents of what bloody morning, we have copied a report carefully written at the time by C.M. Burley, editor of the Pennsylvania Freedman, another um, abolitionist newspaper, by the way, who visited the scene of the battle immediately after it was over and doubtless and doubtless obtained as faithful an account of all facts of the case as could it have been had. Last Thursday morning, a left instance, a peaceful neighborhood borders of Lancaster County was made of the scene of a bloody battle resulting from an attempt to capture several men, several colored men as fugitive slaves. As the reports of fray which came to us were contradictory and having good reason to believe that those of the daily press were grossly one-sided and unfair, that's nothing new, we repaired to the scene of the tragedy and by patient inquiry and careful examination, endeavored to learn the real facts. So let's, let's get into where are we? All right, I'm on the right page. Let me go back down. Very early on the 11th instance, a party of slave hunters went into the neighborhood about two miles west of Christiana near the eastern border of Lancaster County in pursuit of fugitive slaves. The party consisted of Edward Gorge, his son Dickerson Gorge, his nephew Nicholas Dixon, and others from the Baltimore County, Maryland. Again, the fugitive slave law allowed these um, quote-unquote enslavers who supposedly owed, uh, owed labor and service to the ability to secure federal marshals and, and you can deputize others local officials in the county to force them to help you capture these uh enslaved people so let's see the board um, at the dawn of the day they discovered land and ambush near the house of one william parker a color man by an inmate of the house who had started for his work he fled back into the house by the pursued slave hunters who entered the lower part of the house but were unable to force their way into the upper part to which the family had retired a horn was blown from the upper window and two shots were fired, both, as we believe, do were not certain by the assailants, one at the colored man who fled into the house and the other at the inmates through the window. No one was wounded by either. A parlay ensued. So in this parlay, um, of course, they're trying to get the uh, quote unquote enslaved Africans out of the house, but I don't think it ended too well for them. But let's continue. Uh, the slaveholder demanded his slaves, who he said were concealed in the house. The colored men presented themselves successfully at the window and asked if they were the slaves claimed. Gore said that neither of them was a slave. They told him that they were the only colored men in the house and were determined to never be taken as slaves. So I don't know, this I free myself is coming, you're seeing it manifest before your eyes. Mutual threats were uttered by the two parties. The slave hunter told the blacks that resistance would be useless and they had a party of 30 men in the woods nearby. The blacks wanted them again to leave and they would die before they would go back into slavery. Let's skip to the next page. Oh, and this is the actual picture here that you saw before on that slide. I tried to turn it sideways, but it's going to mess up the share. So I'll, I'll be sure to uh, post it on the ABK community page with a description after this video was over. And, and by the way, if you haven't yet, again, we put a lot of great information on the community page. Um, majority of the information that we talk about during these lives are also provided, if not in the description, um, in the Discord and the NBK community page. And sometimes I even try to throw it on the uh, the Facebook, Facebook group. So again, if you ever have any questions or would like to find out any of this information that we discuss, just leave a comment underneath the video. We're just on these uh, the social media stuff, and then we'll be sure to uh, get the information to you as quickly as we can. And again, we appreciate the support. So where will we? Uh, page 351. Find that they can do nothing further. Hannaway and Lewis, who were two Quakers who came by to try to, you know, get everything resolved, both started to leave again, counseling the slave hunters to go away. 
and the colored people to peace, but had gone but a few rods when one of the inmates in the house attempted to come out the door. Gorsh presented his revolver, ordering him back. The colored man replied, you had better go away if you don't want to get hurt, and at the same time pushed him aside and passed out. Maddened by this, and stimulated by the question of his nephew whether he would take such an instance from a dead nigger, Gorsh fired at the colored man and the following by his son and nephew, who both fired their revolvers. The fire was returned by the blacks who made rush upon them at the same time. Gorsh and his son fell, the other one dead, the other one wounded. The rest of the party, after firing the revolvers, fled precipitately through the corn to the woods, pursued by some of the blacks. One was wounded, the rest escaped unhurt. Klein, the deputy marshal, again, you can they had a federal marshal. Share the Discord link. Hold up. Let me see. I think I don't have any mods in here right now. I think. Family, I appreciate your patience. I'm about to drop the Discord link in the. Uh, let's see. The link to the Discord is in. So, but I don't have to read the whole thing to you, fam. Let me put this in the chat for you. And again, it starts on page 351, where it discusses, and there's a whole, it's a lot of, you know, Robert Small stories in there. I'm sure Robert Boss Brown stories in there. Uh, William, William Crabb stories in there. Abel Galloway, uh, majority of the figures that you know. Uh, Abram Galloway escaped. He went on to be a North Carolina assemblyman. His story is in this text. So if you ever get an opportunity and you want to get some firsthand accounts, some primary accounts, uh, you know, this experience, William Steele, the Underground Railroad, a record is definitely a text I recommend. Uh, you don't have to necessarily rely on anybody else outside of your culture. Boom, you got another black historian. That's a plug for the Black Historian series. If you haven't yet, please check out those videos. Um, let me see if we got anything in the chat. So you put the link in the chat. I ain't dropped the link in the chat in a minute. If anybody wanted to come on, if not, you know what I'm saying? I won't hold, won't hold your time. Right, again, we got 30 in here. Yeah, I really appreciate the support. Get that work TV. Peace. Appreciate you coming through. Ghostface Keisha, I appreciate you for coming through. Christopher McBride. Start sharing the screen. Oh man, how can I forget German Coast Uprising? I'll, I'll cover this while we wait on somebody to come in the chat. So today, again, let's see. For those who don't know, the German Coast Uprising was a revolt of black slaves in parts of the territory of New Orleans on January 8th through the 10th, 1811. The uprising occurred on the east bank of the Mississippi River and was not on the same. Uh, John the Baptist, St. Charles Jefferson parishes. Between 64 and 125 enslaved men marched from sugar plantations in near eastern, near present day La Place, and now German coast towards the city of New Orleans. They collected more men along the way. Some accounts claimed a total of 200 to 500 slaves participated. During their two day, 25 mile march, the men burned five plantation houses, three completely, several sugar houses and crops. They were armed mostly with hand tools. So, again, they only may have killed two people. Where was that? Oh, yeah, this next paragraph. White men led by officials of the territory, formed militia companies, and in the battle on January 10th, killed 40 to 45 of the escaped slaves while suffering no fatalities themselves. Then hunted down and killed several others without trial. And then you see they cutting their heads off and the whole nine. But again, those sugar plantations. So that's that's money. That's how you talk about an agrarian society losing a crop. So I'm pretty sure, you know, that destroyed a few families. So salute to them. You see. And this is also one of the pictures from I think this was, was 1888. I think this one was 
Let's do both. You see that drum there? Shout out to the brother True Story. And if you haven't yet, please go check out Give a Drum a Song where he where he highlights the significance of the drum, not only in uh African culture on the continent, but how that uh drum was used to communicate in, in battles and dances, um, to the point where the colonists had to outlaw the drum. You know, check out if you have it, Congo Square. It's one of the places where I believe that's where I'm gonna put you use the drum. What's coming on? That's cool. I'm gonna get out of your hair. I appreciate what we got. 33. Please like, share, like and share the show. Again, hit that bell so you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, go check out our previous videos. Check out our community page. The Discord link is in the chat. Also with the a copy of the William Steele text. Um, Discord link in there. And if you need anything, any comments on the video. Uh, to go out to the information and let us know and we'll get back to St. Louis National Hair Expo Peace Our Law to Law Peace Street Culture Media I think I think I just got to the Discord yeah the Discord link is in the chat alright we out of here peace Oh.